Ron, you talked earlier about the importance of knowing the sources of the disease, uh, what actually has caused the problem, and you've been a, a moral and a prophetic voice for so many years about exactly what's wrong with the American monetary system. This is a big question to ask, but can you give us a, at least a brief overview of you know, what, is, what is wrong with the American monetary system? Well, first, it's unconstitutional. You know, there's uh, the founders understood more about money than a lot of us give them recognition for, at least the average American and or what's taught in our schools. They had gone through the runaway inflation of the continental dollar. They didn't want it to happen again. They did take they didn't want even the states to print their own money. So they wanted to limit the supply of money by saying Congress could not emit bills of credit, which was paper money, that Congress's responsibility was to maintain a sound currency, gold and silver, to be the only uh, legal tender. And they they did not give authorization to a central bank. So everything that we are dealing with now, especially since 1913, is unconstitutional. But that's the continuation of the argument between uh, uh, Jefferson and Hamilton. Hamilton, even back then, they started the National Bank. They wanted the central bank. And, of course, courts have always ruled against hard money, whether it was early on or whether it was in the Civil War after uh, uh, Roosevelt took the gold, stole the gold from the people. Courts have always supported uh, the uh, the big money people and big government people. So constitutionally, it's wrong. But uh, I mentioned the morality of it. Morality, uh, you know, this whole idea that we legalize counterfeiting is, is just terrible. If we only could think of the uh, Federal Reserve people as counterfeiters, maybe we could get more attention. And I know you know this, but we can recall that in, in the uh, Coinage Act of 1792, they mandated the death penalty for counterfeiting money. <laughs> and I kept thinking, boy, if they enforced that today, I mean, we'd have a lot of a lot of a job to do to round up the counterfeiter. But it is. It's stealing value from people. It is like counterfeit. But then again, uh, we do talk a whole lot about the economics and the malinvestment and the business cycle, and that's the great contribution of, of Mises and Hayek to get us, as well as Murray, to understand how the business cycle uh, works and why people suffer. So th- this, this to me, is an invitation for us to come across as those who care about our fellow man. Uh, too often we're accused of lacking compassion because if, if we tend to be too flippant and they say, well, what do you think we ought to do? Nothing. We didn't need to do nothing. We need to just get out of the way. They don't think we have compassion. But if anybody has compassion for their fellow man or for their own self-esteem uh, and their own families, they have to be concerned about the, these economic issues because that's how the maximum number of people can be taken care of. Ron, o- over the years you've warned about a crisis like this and about the possibility of such things as another bank holiday of the sort that Franklin Roosevelt declared. It seems to me that people in power, not only in the U.S., but in the whole Western world, the finance ministers, the presidents, the central bankers, all seem to be unbelievably arrogant, unbelievably panicked, unbelievably incompetent. What do you think they might do to us? Well, I think they're going to—they're working already on a central bank for the, for the whole world. It'll be uh, fiat money. Uh, I don't think they have to have the holidays uh, like they had in the past. But the, what they've replaced it with is just uh, uh, unlimited credit pumped into the system. This five trillion dollars that they've already pumped in and guaranteeing everything. Uh, for everybody. That's why, you know, I, I believe that eventually it's going to be very, very destructive to the dollar, even though in a relative sense, the dollar is strong compared to the other paper currencies. But right now, I believe what's going on is they know those who run the show, the financiers, Wall Street, Goldman Sachs, Secretary of Treasury, and uh, and all the central bankers of the world who get together and do it in complete privacy, they know that the uh, uh, Bretton Woods II, or whatever the system what you want to call it since uh, uh, August of 1971, is in the end stages, and that the dollar system is really at the end stages. So in these recent meetings that they had at the IMF and the Group of Seven and others, I think what they've agreed to is let's do what we can to prop up the dollar. In, in the meantime, we'll do whatever, and, and you guys just pump out the money. But the agreement is that we need a new system because it, it is deeply flawed, and now they are working feverishly uh, at this very moment. This is only – I have no proof of this. This is just my assumption uh, that I believe they're working feverishly to come up with a brand-new system 
And uh, I think it's the second stage, what George Bush Sr. talked about, you know, when he was going into the uh, first uh, Persian Gulf War, uh, where he talked about, he brought it out in the open, what we need is a new world order. And I think that's exactly what they're working on, is uh, the continuation of a new world order. And now, anytime there's a crisis, it gives them an opportunity to do this. And this financial crisis gives them the opportunity to promote this uh, uh, worldwide control uh, of governments as well as finances by just scaring people to death and saying, no, what you need is more government. You, uh, freedom fails. The Alan Greenspans of the world are saying, freedom fails. Capitalism doesn't work. Uh, but you know, in spite of all that, I'm I'm still optimistic that they can't they can't do it. I I still think there's going to be a a spirit of nationalism and a spirit of freedom that uh, will rise up. Uh, it's just that uh, too many people are led by the propaganda machine that's put out by the government. But information is spreading differently now, so I, I'm hopeful they, that our message will uh, will be heard. And in some ways, we have been getting more attention these last two years than uh, we've had in a long time. Well, Ron, I'm not a big fan of politics or of the political system, but I'll bet you there are a whole lot of Republicans who are realizing today and in these weeks what a horrific and stupid mistake they made not to nominate you and what a different country this would be and what a different Western world this would be if you were coming into office as president. But perhaps even more important is, again, your moral and your prophetic voice, your teaching voice that keeps speaking the truth. I think people are listening. Even some of the media are listening, and they need to listen to you. And uh, in in your words, show the path forward for a freer America and a more prosperous America. So thanks so much for coming on today. Well, thank you very much. No, real nice to be with you. You've been listening to The Lou Rockwell Show. Produced by LouRockwell.com, the best-read libertarian website in the world. If you'd like to advertise on this podcast or on the website, email advertise at LouRockwell.com. And thanks for listening.